Our goal is not just an environment of clean air and water and scenic beauty while forgetting about the worst environments in America. Our goal is an environment of decency, quality, and mutual respect for all human beings and all other living creatures. Our goal is a decent environment in its broadest and deepest sense. And it will require a long, sustained political, moral, ethical, and financial commitment far beyond any commitment ever made by any society in the history of man. My name is Tia Nelson. I am the daughter of Gaylord Nelson, the founder of Earth Day. My father was an extraordinary dad. He was an extraordinary leader. Growing up as his daughter, it was mostly a great privilege, but also I felt a heavy sense of duty to public service uh, and to making a difference with my life. I work for the Outrider Foundation. Our goal is to educate people about big global challenges like climate change. One of my favorite quotes from my father was delivered on the eve of the first Earth Day in 1970. He said, ecology is a big, a big science. science not, not a narrow one. one. It's a big concept. And it is concerned with all the ramifications of all the relationships of all living creatures to each other and their environment. So when he talked about the environment, he talked about ecology and environment in the broadest sense, in the most inclusive sense. That idea resonated with students across the country. Collectively, they made a difference that was unforeseeable. This movement and this fight is about all of us because what is more fundamental than the air that we breathe, than water? than the soil that we stand on, than the land that we love. Like, what is more fundamental to every single one of us than that? My name is Varshini Prakash. I am from Boston, Massachusetts, and I am one of the co-founders of Sunrise Movement. We are building a movement of young people all across this nation to stop the climate crisis and create millions of good jobs for our generation in the process. And when I began looking back into what the first Earth Day was like, what it meant, the level of people who got involved, the kind of political action, I think for me, Earth Day now is about getting back to our roots. My father was brilliant at working across the aisle to build a consensus. Um, he knew when to compromise, he knew when to stick to his principles. Think of all of the important environmental laws that were passed after that first Earth Day, and they were passed um, uh, with significant support from both parties. For six years, um, I said that climate change was nonsense in as much as I represented Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, probably one of the reddest districts, in the reddest state of the nation. Um, that was the end of the inquiry for me. So I, I admit that's fairly ignorant, but that's the way it was for six years. So I'm uh, Bob Inglis, and I run an outfit called RepublicEN.org, where conservatives, convincing conservatives that they're really good on climate and that they've got the answer. It's free enterprise innovation. My son, the eldest of our five kids, came to me. He uh, was voting for the first time because he just turned 18. And he said to me, Dad, I'll vote for you, but you're going to clean up your act on the environment. It's the first of a three-step metamorphosis for me. And step two was going to Antarctica with the science committee, seeing the evidence in the ice core drillings. Uh, step three was another science committee trip. It's there that, uh, at a stopover at the Great Barrier Reef, great uh, blessing there was meeting an Australian climate scientist named Scott Heron and just being inspired by his faith to act on climate change. When Bob spoke about climate change while serving in the United States Congress, he was primaried and he lost his election. He was attacked for speaking the words climate change. This was a transformative moment in his life and led to him dedicating his whole career today to addressing the climate change challenge. For young people growing up in this country, we have been defined by the climate crisis. People who have been born after the year 2000 have never lived a year on this planet that wasn't one of the hottest years on record. We are the climate generation. 
And so now, at a young age, we have realized that if our politicians aren't going to do something about this problem, then we have to take matters into our own hands. Through leadership of people like Varshini, the youth movement has been energized in the last year in ways that uh, resemble what was happening almost 50 years ago when the first Earth Day occurred. There comes a place where activism drives even the crustiest old timer to decide to get involved. I don't think there's any other issue viewed in its broadest sense, which is as critical to mankind as the issue of the quality of the environment in which we live. Environmentalism is not a partisan issue. Environmentalism is a quality of life issue for all of us. You know, I'm very optimistic about the future. I think we're going to solve climate change. It's going to be that conservatives come together with progressives to figure out we're literally in this together. This is about not just changing light bulbs. This is about changing our politics. And if anything, we will be successful because we do it together. I want the youth of today to know that I have done everything that I can to ensure on the 100th anniversary of Earth Day, we are celebrating a brighter future. We're at a critical moment in history. We have an opportunity to address the greatest environmental challenge of our time. Are we able? Yes. Are we willing? That's the unanswered question.